Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome or welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be going through some visual effects. We're going to be improving our particle systems for our enemies and things like that. On top of this, we're going to be improving on our doors. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when we open the door, it's going to slide down nicely so it just adds a bit more animation. And then lastly for this episode, we're also going to be improving the particle system of the shooting. So that when we shoot our bullets and we hit enemies or walls, things like that, it's going to give off particle effects and they're going to splatter off of the walls. Which overall will just add a bit more polish to your game. So let's just get straight to it. Alright guys, so first let's just add some particles. So what we're going to do is, just like the tomato example, we'll insert a new object, particle. And then what we want to do here is, so we just want to give this a shape of some kind. I'm just using circles for now, feel free to use whatever you'd like. So for example, we've got a red circle here. And then we'll just call this, so I'll just call this a uh, enemy particle, something like that. So one issue when we, with using particles when you use 3D cameras is that the particles are going to appear flat and they're just going to shoot outwards. To fix this, what we need to do is we need to head over to behaviors and we're going to add a twin behavior. So that's all you need to do for now with that. And what we're going to do is we're going to be able to use that to make it so we can adjust the Z height and things like that. So imagine if this is a splash animation like a tomato, we don't want it just to come outwards. We want it to shoot up and then, and then gradually, you know, fall down. So twins are really useful and this that is going to be a main focus on this, this video as we'll also be using those for the door. Next, let's just quickly configure the particle a bit. So I'm just gonna reduce the values. We'll say six particles. We'll, we'll increase the spray cone. We want it to be one shot. I'll increase the speed to 300, the size to 64. And then for now, for all these, we'll just set these to 50. The only thing I'll leave different is the grow rate randomizer. We also can add some gravity. I'm gonna set this to 500 actually on the gravity. And for now, that's fine for me. Play around with this and get the particle effects you'd like. For this example, I'll also, sh I'll also be doing it with two particles because what I like to do is, so I like to clone a particle and then what I like to do is I like to make the colour slightly different. So for this one, we'll make this one darker. So we have two different variations. And then what I'll do is, so I'll half the size. The rest can probably stay the same. Actually, we'll also reduce the speed. So we'll set the, the we'll half the size, reduce the speed a little. And so now if you were to place these on top of each other, and you preview this, you could get an idea of how that would look. And as you can see, you can get an idea of, now this is, it could use some more work. But for the sake of this tutorial, it's fine. But as you can see, by grouping particles together, you can get a much more dynamic effect. Alright guys, so once you're happy with your particles, we're going to head over to our event sheet. And we want to head over to where we've got our enemies set up. We want to find our undestroyed event. So for example, in this video, we have an enemy tomato on destroyed. And the first thing we want to do is we want to create the particle. So we'll say action system. We want to create an object. And then we just want to spawn the particle. So we want to say enemy particle. Make sure that they're on your game layer. And then for the X and Y, we just want to set, so get your enemy. So in this case, it's enemy tomato, and you just want to set the X and Y. We can duplicate this, and then we'd also just set it to the second particle we added. So we've got enemy particle 2, and the rest can stay the same. So we've created our particles, we now need to say what to do when we've created it. So add an action. We'll say particle tomato on created. And this is where the tween comes into play, so what we do is add an action. Once again, enemy particle. And this time, we want to say tween. So search tween, and you want to find tween one property. We can do a tag if you'd like, you don't need to. And then property, we want to set the Z elevation. This means the height, so in 3D space, that's the height. All right guys, so for the end value, we want to type self dot Z elevation minus, and then we'll just say 32. Now we need to manually put a value in here as this is not a 3D object, so it doesn't actually have a height. And the Z elevation is just how high up the elevation is when it spawns in. So it'll spawn in where it spawns, and then, it'll, and then we're going to gradually, by the end of it, we want it to be on the floor. We can set the time to 2, and the, the ease we want, we want in, out, sign. Like this. Destroy on complete, you can set it to true if you'd like, and the repeat count can be 0. Alright guys, so that's the basics for that. Once you've done that, you might want to play around with this. I just started messing with the, you know, the minus on the Z elevation, how far to pull it down. I changed, you know, you can also change to just an outside and just play around with all these things. And then lastly, you might want to also change the actual Z elevation on the particles. So for example, I've set this to four for now. And then when we test this, so it should just start, they should just spawn around the middle point of the, the enemy. And as you can see, they just get pulled down now. So you can build on this, this is just the basics of that, but as you can see, you could use this effect, you know, to add a little much more depth to your 3D projects. Alright, great, let's do the doors next. If you've not been following the series, all you'd need to do is create a 3D object. Um, we have our values here, but just for the sake of this, if you just want to learn the effect, all we need to do is, so once again, we're going to add a tween behavior, so behaviors tween. 
And then once we've done this, all we need to do is, so we need to head over to our event, which uh, triggers when we're opening the door. So for example here, we have it, if you're following the series, we have our pick nearest two. So inside this event, all we need to then do is, just like we did before with the, the particles, so you're going to add an add event, so you're going to say door, tween, once again, one property, and just like the particles, the elevation, um, and basically this time, the only real difference is, we're minusing the self.z height, as of obviously be, being a 3D object, it has its own actual height. You want to add a weight as well, so you want to go system, add action, weight, and you just want to wait a second as well. So for example, if you have this set for a second, I would then just make the wait at the same time. So you wait, you do that for a second and you wait, and then it'll destroy the door. The wait just ensures that the tween can actually get finished before it destroys the door. And it's as simple as that for the door, guys. It's why I wanted to show you as well, because tweens can be very useful for adding some animation. And I'll just show you again, like the, like the preview, you open a door, and as you can see, it just slides down like that. And then on top of that, if you added some additional visual effects like the particles and things, you can start combining those to get a much nicer polished looking effect. All right, guys, so the last thing for this video is I'm, I'm going to go through the visual effects for the bullets. So when you hit objects such as the wall or the enemy, it's going to spawn some particles that are going to also tween. So first, head over to your bullet um, events. So if you're following this series, you should have something that looks like this. You will have the visual folder. And then at this point, it's hard to tell what you, uh, how far along in the bullets you are. So I, ca I can't remember in terms of like what events are actually set up. So for the, I'm just going to go through this as it's already working and we'll just go through it step by step. So what we're going to do is, so once you've created your visual folder, we're going to add an event and we're going to say system, compare two values, and we want to say bullet.count, I want to say is that greater than zero. So if the bullet count is more than zero, every 0.025 seconds, we want to spawn particles. So we're going to add another action. We say add, add a blank sub event, and then this is what we're going to add this loop here. So we say system for each, and then you just want to put your bullet in there. So for each bullet, we then want to say system, and this is where we're going to create the object. So we're going to say system, create object. You want to create your bullet visual, um, so if, you, if you've been following the series, you'll have the same thing. If not, that's just the particle effects or the actual visual object you have attached to your bullet object. You're going to set the layer to game and just set it to the bullet X and Y. And at this point as well, guys, if I just paused here, you could, I am going to go through it, but you could also just pause and copy this. Um, but I am going through it if any of this is a bit confusing. So anyways, we're going to continue and we're going to say, so we're going to set the Z elevation just to bullet.z elevation. Just like with the particles, we're just setting the height. But once again, we'll say bullet visual. We're going to set the size. And so this right here, you could copy this. We're going to set the size to the bullet width, minus one. And then we're going to divide it by this number here. And we're also going to do the same with the height. And then now for the next thing, for the tween, we want to do a two property tween for this one. And we want to set the size. So if you just copy this real quick, property, we set it to size, zero, zero, not point one, default. So as you can see there, just copy that. All right, guys, so the next big thing is this chunk here. And this is a function. So you want to right click and you want to add a function. And so once you've created this function, what we need to do is we need to right click we need to add, and we want to actually want to add parameters. So what you're going to do is you want to add a bunch of parameters. So four parameters, they're all going to be numbers. Actually, no, three of them are going to be numbers. And then a final one, a string can be a color if you want to set the color. And so right there, so add your parameters, position X, position Y. We have quantity and we have a string for the color. On top of this, we also need three other variables. So we're going to right click and this time we're going to add local variables. You want to add three numbers and just copy them right here. And then once you've done that, you can right click on your function and we can say add, add a sub event. And you just want to open this, you want to say system, I want to repeat. And then we just want to repeat quantity time. So you just type quantity, it'd come up there like this. As you can see, it's the same as here. And then we can now just actually create in the bullets and set in the tweens. So this right here, this is dead simple. Create the object, set the Z elevation, just like the particle. We're going to set these variables, so we're going to set these variables here. And then for the tweens, we want to add a sort to tween the position, the z elevation, and the size. So for this first one, it's a two properties. Again, I'd recommend just pausing this and copying it, it'll be much faster. So two properties, call it position, set it position, and then just copy this right here. The second one, this is a one property, just like when we set for the particles. This is the z elevation. So once again, you'll be now familiar to this. Just pause here and copy this one. And then lastly for the size, once again, that's a two property. We set it to the size. And this one is just more of a time delay. So this is basically going to destroy the particle once the size is gone. As you can see, we've got to destroy and complete. And then lastly, now that you've got that system set up, all you need to do is you need to set up when to destroy the bullets. So for example, here we have on collision with wall. So we say bullet on collision with, and then you just want to set it to each different object you want. So I have a wall, the enemies and a door. We're going to destroy them. And then we want to add another event. So bullet on destroyed. 
Just so right click, bully, on destroyed. And then this time, now what we can do is we can actually call the function. So we add an action, we say functions, and then we just say bullet visual. And then inside of here, we now have our actual parameters we added. So for the X and Y, we want to say bullet.x and Y. And then we want to do it once. And then the color, that is completely optional. Okay, great. So that's it for this video. As you can see, we've now got a nice particle effects that just splat out. We have our door. So if we interact with our door, it has a nice sign effect. It just slides down like this. And the particles, when they now hit the enemies, you can see they're shooting up. They're, they're shrinking. It's a nice collision effect. And the same happens when we hit our doors as well. So if I was to go through here... And I hit the doors, as you can see, a nice particle effect just hits the doors. And again, this is just how you're going to add more visual depth to your games. And if you just keep adding elements like this, it's just going to add more and more polish and make it look more like a complete project. So I hope you enjoyed, guide. Hopefully something from here was useful. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.